you're doing those projects. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So the, the concept of uh, re regulated liability network is really an investigation into the application of distributed ledger technology to regulated financial services. And if I just pause there for a second, it's entirely not obvious that DLT is a good technology for the regulated space. Because we have to remember that DLT was created as the antithesis mm -hmm. of regulated financial services and not in order to augment it. So the first thing that you have to do if you want to apply DLT to the regulated space is you've got to put a number of fundamental blockchain constructs into the garbage. We don't want non-sovereign currency units. We don't want commodity forms of money. We don't want proof of work. We don't want anonymity. We don't want tokenomics. We don't want economic systems which are outside of the regulatory perimeter. So if you, if you ditch all that stuff, what's left? <laughs> <laughs> and there is a kernel of stuff which is left because the way you get to that is to ask yourself, what does Ethereum do better than the traditional financial sector? And that's where you find some really intriguing possibilities. Number one, um, Ethereum is 24 by 7. Now that I wouldn't say is a unique feature of a, of a blockchain. You can do that on a different yeah. technology. So, but it's true that, that Ethereum is running 24 by 7 and almost nothing in traditional financial services is. The second thing is more is deeper and more interesting, which is that Ethereum is multi-asset. And the truth is that the financial system that we've built up over decades is fundamentally siloed. So let's just take a, a microscope and look at the US. You've got Fedwire, for, Fedwire for, for cash, which only knows central bank dollars. Fedwire for securities, which only knows treasuries. DTCC knows investment grade bonds and other uh, securities. So we have built up separate islands and every financial institution is, is its own data island, its own individual um, you know, record keeping platform. So what DLT suggests to us is what if we move away from that paradigm and have a place where these assets can meet, these multiple assets can meet and be settled within the context of a financial market infrastructure, an, an FMI. And that's essentially what regulated liability network is investigating is can we have a new financial market infrastructure. And again, let's not gloss, gloss over that point mm -hmm. because people do lots of hand waving about blockchain and claim that it achieves atomic settlement, but blockchains don't achieve any form of settlement. Settlement is a legal construct. A blockchain might evidence settlement within a legal construct, within a legal framework, but it doesn't achieve legal settlement. You need an FMI, you need a legal framework. So can we have a, a new financial market infrastructure that's running some kind of DLT or shared ledger? And in that DLT or shared ledger, the different financial assets can be settled 24 by 7 in real time with absolute cryptographic certainty of who owns what. Um, that's regulated liability network. We've done proof of concept here in the US. The results were published on the 6th of July. There's a very active community around it in the UK where we will be examining retail use cases. And, um, and, 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 and frankly, what it is, is it's trying to move beyond CBDC. Yeah. Um, CBDC is a monoline focus on one aspect of the sovereign currency system, which is the central bank money. Um, we think that there's a broader opportunity to upgrade the whole of the sovereign currency system by having infrastructures where commercial bank money, central bank money, e-money, regulated stable coins and other assets can meet and be exchanged within a given legal structure. That's our way. Thank you, Tori. I, I think it's very interesting because when I talk to central banks, a few years ago the conversations we were having were